In this video, I'm going to be defining the hydraulic settings to be used for the catchment feature definitions. Inside of the drainage DGN lib, I'm going to be looking at my drainage area feature definitions and we'll start with the catchments. So here I have a catchment feature definition that's going to be used with the land uses. And then I have a list of single area catchments. I'm going to start by creating the prototypes for the single areas first. Here in the prototypes dialog, I'm going to create a new catchment. And then I'm going to select the name of this catchment and then paste it as my prototype name. Now we'll go in to find the settings for this hydraulic prototype. Use scaled area, I want to use the area of the polygon, so I am going to set that to true. And then for the runoff method, I want this to be rational. We're going to have the area defined by a single area, and then I'll put in the runoff coefficient. Referring back to the features list spreadsheet, when I developed the catchment feature definitions list, I also included the runoff coefficient here in column D. And again, this is going to come from your drainage manual that you should have a runoff coefficient table that's used with the rational method where you can get these values. So for each one of these catchment feature definitions, I am going to be creating a prototype with this assigned runoff coefficient value. For the time of concentration input type, we have two options. We can do a composite time of concentration or user defined. The composite time of concentration is going to provide a semi-automatic method to calculate the time of concentration where we can go ahead and add in the methods that are used. But then for each catchment, the user would need to go in and define the hydraulic lengths and slopes and landings for each one of these. So typically the preferred method is going to be set to user defined where after the catchment's placed the user will go in and define that time of concentration for each catchment. And if they leave it at zero, then the minimum time of concentration is going to be used, which is defined inside of the calculation options. Now I have not set the calculation options up in this DGN lib yet, but when I do, it'll come from this property right here. Now from here, I'm going to be creating a separate prototype for each one of these. So I'll duplicate and then I'm going to rename this to catch business. And we'll keep the same settings. The only thing I'm going to be changing for all of these is going to be the runoff coefficient. Once you create your prototypes for these single areas, then you're going to go over to your feature definition and assign those prototypes to each of the feature definitions. Now let's create the prototype for the land use. So here I'm going to create a new catchment prototype. We'll rename that prototype and then we'll start defining the settings. For use scaled area, we'll set that to true. And then move down to the runoff method, which will be rational method. For area defined by, this is where instead of single area, we're going to be choosing land cover areas. So now when we use this feature definition for land use, it's going to read any land use areas that have been used, and then it will create a collection of those sub areas and then create a weighted runoff coefficient. And then for the time of concentration input type, we're going to leave that as user defined. And lastly, we'll come over here to the feature definition and assign that prototype. 